You're listening to the world famous White Roof Radio, Wolfcast number 633, recorded on some day in November 2017. Tonight brought to you by CravenSpeed.com, MotoringStripes.com, and OutMotoring.com. Mini performance, speed, and style, it's OutMotoring.com. <laughs> Hey gang, it's DB in Arizona bringing you a brand new episode of the world famous White Roof Radio. Joining us here in just a few moments will be uh, my good man Todd Pearson from MotoringStripes.com, uh, Gabe Bridger from MotoringFile.com, and of course the good Reverend Mr. Chad Miller from DetroitTune.com. The reason why you're not hearing them right now and you're only hearing me is when I recorded the show last week, there were some technical difficulties and my part of the show actually did not get recorded. So I'm going to put everything here in the front of the show for you guys. And then the rest of it, think of like your own special episode of White Roof Radio, the Mad Lib version. And I think it'll be a lot of fun. Before, though, I get you started with the show, I want to remind you about some of the sponsors here under the white roof. Of course, our friends over at OutMotoring.com, the the place to go for all of your Mini Cooper needs, wants, desires. You need parts? Go to OutMotoring.com. You need Christmas gifts for that Mini Cooper enthusiast in your life? OutMotoring.com. Complete line of everything for the Mini. It doesn't even matter what you need. You need tools. You need cleaning products. You need uh, the personal gear, the stuff for your person, you know, the shirts, the hats, the sweatshirts. The, uh, the watches, the shoes, you need any of that, you're going to go over to OutMotoring.com. Don't forget too, when you get over to OutMotoring.com, I want you to make sure you enter your email address there at the top of the page. That way, as soon as uh, you put your email address in there and you get emails from OutMotoring.com, you're going to get a 5% discount code with every one of your orders, which is super duper nice. It's 5% off every time you order. And then you just got to get, you know, just got to get the email in there so you get the coupon code. Really cool. And that, of course, from our friends over at Outmotoring. Outmotoring.com. And don't forget to, 100% happiness, easy returns and exchanges. Uh, don't forget to, hitches for your Mini. You need to be able to put a bike rack on your Roadster or you just need a hitch to pull a trailer with your Mini. Uh, they got you covered there. Uh, free shipping on orders over 100 Most orders over $195. Mini club support. That's right. And if you're a Mini club and you are looking for, you know, cool raffle prizes, Outmotoring.com is going to hook you up. Get on over there now and get that all taken care of if you'd be so kind. And of course, our friends over at Outmotoring, Outmotoring.com, mini performance, speed, and tecton quick change bits. That's Outmotoring.com. Also want to take this minute to remind you guys about our other friends, of course, the guys over at CravenSpeed.com. They're the ones that make the really cool custom crafted stuff made out of unobtainium and carbon fiber for your mini and other brands of cars such as BMWs, uh, Toyota pickup trucks, um, Volvos, Volkswagen, Mitsubishis, Fiat's, Mazdas, Lotus, smart cars, all kinds of things. And the kind of things that for you many people that you're going to want, the Platypus license plate mount. So you don't have to drill holes in your bumper to mount your plat- mount your uh, license plate. Uh, you're going to want the stubby antenna, of course, or not. You're going to want the GoPro mount or not, you're definitely going to want to have the dipstick if you have an R50, R53 Mini, uh, or even an R56. You can read it. It doesn't break. Very cool stuff. If you have an R53, you're going to get the pulley from Craven Speed when you're going to do that, when you're actually going to do that upgrade. If you're in one of those states where you can't have your cell phone in your hand, Craven Speed's got you covered with the FlexPod adapter and a whole bunch of more stuff. In, especially you R56 guys, if you want the, the really hot setup for your manual transmission, look at the Craven Speed Short Shifter. Man, it is so nice. And then you put one of those Craven Speed Shift knobs on top. Done, done, and done. Get on over there and check all that out. Uh, don't forget to, to sign up for their newsletter. They don't send out as much as much stuff. You probably want to follow them on Twitter because what happens is Craven Speed will run out of product on occasion. If you follow them on Twitter or Facebook, they update there. It's like, oh, hey, if you're trying to order this, it's back in stock. Um, and the emails, it's like when they add new products. It's really cool stuff. Go over there, check that out, add your email address, get on their sh- on their mailing list. So that takes care of that. And if you do place an order at CravenSpeed.com, you know what we like, right? Leave a comment there on the order form that says, thanks for supporting White Roof Radio. We really appreciate that. So do they. In this case, of course, they being CravenSpeed.com. And finally, I'd like you to go over and check out MotoringStripes.com. Our man Todd will make stripes for your Mini that actually fit your Mini and send them out to you and you install them. 
done and done. Very cool stuff. I want you to go check all this out. If you happen to have a new Clubman, Todd now has the bumper protection strip for you. If you have an R60 Countryman, the first generation Countryman, Todd has the bumper protection strip for you. If you have a new Countryman, that's going to be showing up on the website here very, very soon. And you guys will be able to get that ordered as well. Not to mention uh, the, the badges, the decals, the swag, and of course the motoringstripes.com hack that somebody actually was able to take care of, take advantage of. And that's if you want the uh, white roof radio sunroof delete kit where Todd will send you out vinyl that will fit over your sunroof to make your air conditioning work and kind of help uh, cure you of the cabana effect all you have to do is tell him the year and the color of mini that you've got and he will send you an invoice for a hundred dollars you pay the hundred dollars and he will send you the white roof radio sunroof delete kit you install yourself it's actually a fairly simple job it just takes about an hour and it makes your air conditioning work and it keeps the sun out of your eyes. I, I swore by it. And if I ever were to have a mini again that had heart, that had the uh, sunroof, I would definitely have the white roof radio sunroof delete kit. Make sure you get that ordered and you can find that at the motoringstripes.com contact page. That's a little motoringstripes.com hack. Um, and then also to watch out Black Friday. Todd said that he might actually have a special on Black Friday, which is just a couple days away. So if you're looking for something cool, keep an eye on motoringstripes.com, you know, because blank is boring. All right, guys, as I already mentioned, this is going to be definitely an oddly shaped show. I'm just going to let you roll right into it. Think of it again, like I mentioned, as the White Roof Radio edition of Mad Libs. And we're going to go and let the boys take over right about now. I, I am here, and uh, I'm quick with the. I'm trying to be quick with the cough button tonight. So, yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm here, and actually, also not sick. Uh, my phone might be dead, but uh, you know, <laughs> I'm feeling good. <clears throat> you know, you know. Actually, I didn't drop it. I didn't do anything. It was just. Uh, I think old age got it's an it. A- <laughs> DB, it's an Android. It and is an Android, and I'm, you know, I'm not. I'm not that I'm <laughs> proud of it, but I'm not against it either. I don't hate it. I mean, it's been a great phone. It's. I mean, it's an S series, so I mean, it's almost an iPhone, really. If you I'm think just about saying, it, I'm it just comes saying, with you swipe standard. You don't have standard. to ask what happened. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, I mean, I, I'm feeling good. feeling good. Uh, I, I really don't know if it's a special treat if I've been on the show the last several times, and that's true. I'm also sick. Which, well, I please it's me too. I want to be on every show. I'm also sick, which probably means it's not a treat because you're going to hear me talk a little bit like Johnny Cash and then cough like ho- horribly every so often. And also, DB, I want you to know I'm wearing my vintage headset right now. Yes, it is. I have I have several dongles to make it work, but they're you're just the headset though. <laughs> you're just wearing a headset. <laughs> no comment. <laughs> With some dongles. It's set with- I, I'm not even going to touch it. I'm not going to touch it. What? Ruining the brand, man. I think the brand ruined itself. <laughs> That's Motor Trend. I mean, they're they're going to pick. They they love Corvettes. Why would they want a Clubman? Why would they love a Clubman? American Steel. Is what they like. like, I mean, are you kidding me? It's a Clubman. It's not a little hatch. It's a four-door Mini with lots of space. They want it made of helium. <laughs> and it, yeah, it's hilarious to me. It's but, hilarious. But you know why it's hilarious? Doesn't have enough space. I don't think you were on the show when I talked about I had a Clubman for a week and uh, no. I drove it to the airport, and it would not fit my carry-on, my my uh, carry-on bag in the back without putting the seat down. Did you kill a giraffe, dismember it, and put it in a bag? Because I I travel just just for the record I travel all the time I have kids back there I got I got craziness back there the amount I got kids everywhere in that thing I got three kids in that thing all the time and luggage and then that thing is fantastic it's I mean I it's it is it is equivalent in my mind to a three series as far as what you can pack in there. And like the idea that they're like, oh, it doesn't drive like a, a old Mini that I used to have in 2003. It's not. It's like a pretty good sized car that you can treat differently. If you want the old Mini, 
Well, the good thing is they actually sell one like that. It's lighter weight that doesn't break down as much. So you oh. should get that. Yeah, I have no problem with the handling of the of the club. I, I just think it's insane. Like I, I'm just sorry, but like uh, the auto the automotive press, most most of the automotive press. I hate wagons. Are no? Can I just use the f word? Is it possible? No, I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't. Too much editing. Are <laughs> flipping idiots because there's there's such a singularity in their in their mindset. And I mean, I'm not trying to apologize for the club, but I mean, I I don't give a flip. See what I did there, TV? Um, about about what they think or that, but it's like it's just laziness, you know. It's like it's like saying, "Oh man, you know, like I don't know what Mercedes is doing with the Glinda wagon now. Like they they you know like they're 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 quilting the leather. I feel the essence is lost. It, you know, come on, it's 2017. It's it's things have changed a little bit, you know. Like like these guys getting they get paid twenty six thousand dollars a year. To travel around the world and drive cars, you know, and then go sip like rare like vodka and like you know uh, whatever later, like it, th- they're in a, a zone that nobody else is in. They and live in a about world and a bubble that does not exist in the real world. And, and I think that about it. you start to no, I mean they don't have patches in the elbows because they're all really young and they used to be bloggers. This is a different world now. And so they don't, um, they don't like, they don't see the world in front of them. They're just trying to like measure things in the context of being able to write a headline that defines clicks. the article, that gets them clicks, that gets them noticed, that gets them put further down the chain to that next job that makes them 28K a year. So it's just, <laughs> it, I mean, uh, you know, I'm sorry, but like, it's you're not laziness. wrong, Gabe. You're not wrong it's at all. Total laziness. And I see it. And it's not just about minis. I see it with a lot of cars, and it's and it's a shame because there are some great automotive riders out there that are phenomenal that dissect cars in a way that I can't, and I'm I admire them. But God, so many of them just don't do it, and they're so lazy. And mini, I gotta tell you, I feel like is such the butt of their jokes, and it's such a shame. <laughs> I, I DB, that is the only possible way you could end my like giant soapbox moment. So I appreciate that. <laughs> so can I just say, why would anybody not have the stubby antenna at this point? Some people like the long antenna. Well, and it's not even that long anymore. The standard one that comes, yeah, the oh, yeah. That comes on the F fifty six is half the length as it was in previous generation days. But it was long. Yeah, the oh, man, I miss my roaster so much, DB. I gotta tell you, you. I want you to enjoy that thing every single day, and know that I'm thinking of you driving that car. Further, say how TV, often you close it. I drove my my Roadster through the winter in Chicago, and anything over 45 degrees, that that top was down. Yeah, we have the we have the 50 degree rule. We have 50 to 90. It's like if it's above 50, it's down, and if it's below 90, but 90 degrees more than a short trip is just a little too hot. The sun just starts to bake you, and it just is... All right. Yeah. Two thoughts, guys. I, I want to buy an X5. Like a 1999... Why? Because you're a woman and you like to sit up high? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. In spite of I'm that. Sorry, I had to. I just couldn't resist. No, you're about... You're, you're going to understand why in a second. Okay. I want to cut the roof off with a chainsaw. First off... <laughs> They, they, I want to. I want to. I want to. I want to have somebody build a roll cage, and I want to make that a mother flipping convertible. <laughs> they have this with car. No it's, top. With no top. They they have this. And I want to get the one with pleather, so it's not leather. So if it rains in there, I don't care. And I'm gonna drill holes in there, so it drains out. I'm gonna make myself a Range Rover X5. It's a bad bad idea. Do you know how how? So does the evoke, so and it made me it right made me throw up. I saw one on Craigslist for like two k. Pretty sure it's only got one or two gears in it, but I, that would be great <laughs> in the city. Can't go over. I like, don't need a couple gears. Yeah. <laughs> no, let's let's talk about mini cells for a split second. Yeah, let's because there's some there's some interesting uh, data in there. Oh, so, okay. Countryman is up. This is this is what actually what I want to talk about. In fact, I'm going to write about it and post it. In a second. So the countrymen sales are up 45% year over year. 
So as as we all knew, U.S. As we no, that's that's worldwide. Oh, okay, sorry. So as we all knew, the the larger countrymen, even though there was like lots of like, oh my God, when he's ruined the brand, this is the worst thing I've ever seen. We all knew that the the, the larger countryman was just gonna kill, and everybody would look at it and be like, oh my God, this is exactly what I wanted, and it, and they're doing it, they're killing it, and so sales are up worldwide. They hit three hundred thousand uh, earlier than they ever hit ever in in the history of many. Uh, a lot of that sales uh, success is being driven by China and just Asia in general, for what it's worth. <laughs> so, two thoughts. Number one, what do you think that means for the next countryman? I'll just I'll just drop that. I'll just drop that and let and we can talk about that. <laughs> it's. <laughs> You, it, I, I don't think we're going to go necessarily that route, and I don't think we're going to end up with another paceman necessarily. But the what if it was the four door paceman? Because that's 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 my third topic of the night, by the way. Gosh, just like the people who come in and they look at the countryman. Just coming in a convertible. <laughs> I shit but you I not. Think I have something with less doors and less utility, with, yeah, but not, more money. But more money. I'm I'm not kidding. Um. But this is just the, the, the general stupidity of the uh, car buying public at, at large. Um, yeah, I think the, the Countryman's selling better because it's a better car than it was. It's uh, the F60 is. Well, and I get it, any of those cars too. You get into the, a, a new Countryman and then you get into um, an R60, you know, Countryman, the, the, let's say a 2012, 2013, and it feels cheap by comparison. Yeah. It really feels cheap. <coughs> it does. Um, Side by side, and well, not in the, not in the late versions, but okay. DB, but, that may be one of the funny things you've ever said. That yeah. center rail, by the way, in all seriousness, was badass. If if you were, uh, no, you shorten that, Gabe. It was bad. <laughs> it was badass. If you had no, if you had no desire or need, can I? I'm 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 getting ice right now. This is this is real time. Yeah, I thought you were getting like uh, the the uh, chips were coming out of the slot machine. I was like, damn, yeah, look at him. Well, he while he's talking about how great the rail was, the problem was is the con- the concept was fantastic. The execution was poor because every accessory for it broke within about five minutes. So yes, which is comes down to build quality. Yeah, it was. Well, just, it was a, yeah, it was poorly executed. It was a good idea. Yeah. Are we but talking it, about the rail? Are we talking about the countryman rail right now? I don't know how we get up on that. Why did this happen? <laughs> Gert, this I blame fault. Gert. I, I think it's my fault. I, I, I blame vodka versus uh, bourbon. <laughs> <laughs> well, because it's, it's a derivative of every other vehicle made. Well, here's the here's the problem, and we've talked about this many times before, is that the, the RAV4, the, all of the cars of that size look exactly the same on the road. A RAV4, a CRV, an X1, they all look the same. There's it has a little bit. The Countryman has a little bit more style, a little bit more character, I think. Yeah, I'd say the Those. Countryman's a little bit different. Yeah. But but all the rest of those cars are they look the same and by that I mean they're boring. There's, uh, there's nothing exciting say, about it. like even especially it, it pains me to say this as somebody who loved the the first generation X1 because it was so funky and different. The the new version is is so boring. It, it it is. It really is, and it's sad because uh, the X five is an amazing vehicle. I mean, I I could argue that many. I'm sorry, BMW spent more money on that vehicle than they spent on almost any other vehicle they've they've engineered recently. The X three, by all accounts, I'm going to test drive one in a couple. Of, I'm going to have one for a, a week coming up. It's supposed to be phenomenal. Well, the X3 yet, is, it, is it not their best-selling uh, model? <laughs> uh, you know, shockingly, it's not. It's not. It's not. The three series outsells it by a wide margin. Okay. The X5, uh, it typically outsells the X3. Interesting. Yeah. 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 In the U.S. In- yeah, the X5M is a decent-looking car. I mean, it's a fun car too. Yeah, I've. You, you know, for anybody who's interested, they can go to Bimmerfile 
which is a fantastic site. <laughs> and they can read reviews of the X5M from the first generation and the second generation. There's millions and millions of listeners to this this podcast, and I'm, I'm just guessing at least a few hundred thousand aren't aware. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna put this. I'm gonna put the 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 period on the uh, on the sales comment again, and I'm gonna say it because we're close enough to the end of the year. We got about six weeks left of the sales year for for many, and um, I'm gonna call it right now that sales, many sales in the USA, are going to be down thirty percent this year over their their best sales year ever, which was 2013. So in four short years, many sales have dropped thirty percent in the U.S. Thirty. So Todd. Can you go on record and tell me that you think it's because the design? Is that what you think it is? I think it's two things. I think it's the the design has turned a lot of people off. And that's something that DB alluded to earlier that we're going to talk about later. So many people we know who have been long, long time mini fans. I'm talking 10, 12, 13 year mini owners have turned away. All of them specifically because they don't like the looks of this car. Okay, that's the, and the, and the, and the second part. I think is the the marketing in 2014 when Mini went all in on the premium, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> malarkey, the premium urban adventurer, um, if you will, and it, it it failed in the U.S. Okay, and it was successful in the rest of the world because the cars are selling, so they can call it a success and say marketing worked. But there's so many other factors involved here and in the u.s you can't nail it down to one thing there's not one thing that well i i guess what i don't understand is how in the world can you not attribute the rising or the the the, the low gas prices uh, no you that is a factor that's why i said there's there's many factors you know I- involved in this but um we were at the same situation think back to 2002 Gas prices were low. They weren't high in 2002, and everybody was buying SUVs. And that was the push of many. That was the marketing push. It was the SUV backlash. That was one of the campaigns. Was the Mini was the anti-SUV, and it was cool to drive a small car. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was cool to have a small car. Well, now, fast forward 15 years, there's, there's so many other small cars on the market, and Mini's not the only option for a car that's got the things that it has. I mean, you have so many, you know, everything from a Honda to a Fiat to Ford, um, so many other options in a small car that actually have decent uh, reliability ratings. They have decent uh, equipment. They have decent performance, fuel economy. <coughs> you know, a few. Maybe, thousand. maybe. Yeah. yeah, a few thousand. I think, um, I, think you're, I think you're right and wrong from my perspective. That's my opinion. I will say this. I think that that BMW made a strategic error in 2008. They shut down their Formula One team, and they they took 500 plus of their best engineers, and they put them on a new brand called BMW i, and they told them to solve the problem of urban mobility. And the problem with that is. BMW had a brand that was already trying to solve that problem called me. Mm-hmm. And, and I think that, and this is my perspective, that had they included Mini in BMW I's go forward strategy, which included the i3 specifically, and had they recreated that car and sort of melded what Mini was from a future standpoint into that car, and created a mini version of that car that felt mini-like and very iconic and fully electric, I think they could have rode a wave that Tesla has rode for the past five years. It, it, it's very possible, Gabe, and I think you're right that, that uh, mini, they basically had a lot of success from 2002 to 2008, and uh, I would venture to say all the way up to 2013, their best sales year ever. And... Uh, so so what's happening here is you're saying is their best people basically um, went over to, to BMW i, okay? They lost a lot of the vision for Mini and started going towards, hey, we're a company, we're a business, we have to make money, let's do the lowest common denominator. Not, not, no, not necessarily. Actually, not, that's not what I'm saying at all. They, they, they took their best engineers who were actually at 
<coughs> at their F1 team. Yeah. And they took those engineers and put them and on they eye. created something, two cars, and, and a, an entirely new brand that was unbelievable. I mean, the i3 is is so over engineered for what it is. It, it, it's a it's a carbon monocoque chassis that it, it may look awkward, and that's the designer's fault, not the engineers. But and it may have it may be like it. Should have bigger batteries, not the not the designer or engineer's fault. That's that's BMW's purchasing power. But they created this thing that they poured a ton of thought capital into, and I really believe had they created that car in conjunction with what Mini was doing, they could have created a Mini that had a full electric power, a carbon fiber chassis, guys. Like, can you imagine? And they could have launched it in 2013, 2014. Well, Lexus did that too. It was three hundred thousand dollars, though. Yeah, yeah, and and the i three is thirty five. You know, so I think I think that's the thing. It's like they could have done something really interesting, and many could be right now talking about how they're about to have a two hundred fifty mile, you know, electric, you know, carbon chassis mini available to the public in in six months. Instead, well, who, like, who made that decision not to do that? That's a great question. So it's the BMW board who's ultimately responsible for that. And I think they just don't have, I mean, it's, you know, like every giant corporation. And we talk about, I talk about BMW all the time as a small company in a relationship to VW or Ford or GM, they are. But they're a giant corporation. And there's lots of politics and there's lots of silos. And that's just what happened. And it sucks because I think it it was a shame for the brand. But the bottom line, Gabe, is that the company is profitable on a global scale right now. They're they're still it making is. money for their stockholders, and it they're is. still selling record numbers of cars globally. Okay, globally. Yeah. Put Bare, that barely, barely, but they are. Yeah, they are, and so that that's the goal of the company. Now they should be shitting their pants because <laughs> I like the, pre- by the, way. the previous number one market for Mini <laughs> was the United States of America. Okay. Yeah, now yeah. we've dropped down to hopefully we're still in the top 10, but um out of what 80 or 100 countries they're they're sold in, but we're we're nowhere near number 1 market for many anymore. The 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 market share has dropped to like 11% globally in the US and we used to be like 21 22%. So that's a huge drop. And so I think it's a wake up call and the problem I agree. is is the wake up call has been slowly happening. They've been hitting the snooze button for the last three to four years and thinking, oh, it'll recover. Oh, it'll recover. Oh, it'll recover. And and yes, price of fuel in the US is a big deal. But um, there's a lot of other things that are a big deal. And I think they can't go. Something that happened in, in 2012 was they went with a global marketing initiative. Basically, many. Um, Do you really think that mattered that much? Because their marketing spend is so small. It is. So it, it is. However, um, and this goes along with what we're going to talk about in a little bit too, is that their their marketing push in, in 2014 was a success, mildly so, in the rest of the world. But in the U.S., it turned people off. Okay, it didn't attract the new customers. But, but I mean, it, how many? Like, I really, I, I mean, it, it may, maybe you're right, but like, I, I just can't imagine it turned off that many people. Well, the cars anymore yeah you're right db the 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 cars were no longer fun and i remember i I watched david duncan give a talk about how mini was perceived in the u.s as a brand that was frivolous and silly and you know too goofy okay and they wanted to go towards more oh no we're sophisticated and premium and i go that was a mistake well but i mean you say that but like do you really think that's actually been executed I mean, I, I don't, been trying I don't to, though. think I've ever seen that fully executed. No, what, here's what here's what was fully executed, Gabe, is what was executed was the fun. They executed the fun out of the brand. Killed it. Killed it. And and they tried, you know, they continued to do many takes the states and tried to have the enthusiasm and everything. But I got to say that I, I've been on the last couple of many takes the states and they have slowly taken the fun out of you know, the enthusiast community. And this is why we've seen so many people drop lately. Like, like I told you guys in Slack this week, I know three people personally. I, I know these people. I've met these people. 
who've left who who got rid of their minis in the last literally in the last week for other brands. Okay, they're they're gone now. Well, regardless regardless of why, like at a macro level, that is a sad thing. It 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 is, and I go, you know what? Nothing still nothing stays the same forever. But the problem is, is is like I was saying, is that many has failed to attract the new kind of clientele that they thought they were going to, and they've done it at the sacrifice of retaining long term customers. And and Gabe, you should know this as as a BMW person, a lifelong BMW person. People, you know, love the brand and they become a BMW fan and they buy them for life. Okay. And if you lose, if you start losing those people, you lose kind of really the heart of what the brand is. People start going, I don't like the cars anymore. I'm no longer, I bought, (laughs) you know, 15 BMWs in my lifetime and now I'm going to go buy an Audi. So there was a lot of, there's a lot of the, the, the theory amongst BMW folks is that they didn't know what to do with Mini because BMW folks would buy a BMW for life. And because it was a certain price point, they 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 would buy a BMW for life for a few reasons. One of them is they love them. The other is they got comfortable with them. Then the yep. third is that they couldn't afford anything more. Or they didn't want or they didn't want to buy anything more. Whereas Mini's a little different. People who have a many often can potentially as they grow older or as they just shift money around or whatever, afford different products. And so that they, 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 there's more mobility at a, at that type of price point. And yeah. so I, I, I'm not, I'm not di- disagreeing with you, uh, Todd. I, I think uh, it's just a um, sort of a, an opinion that many folks or BMW folks have had or have shared with me over the years. They're always curious about that. And they're always kind of, wondering like they didn't want to say like bmw is our like brand we want you to grow into there were a lot of many folks who were vehemently against that type of like opinion or concepts right but i've always wondered you know like where did you expect these people to go do you expect them to graduate into something else or do you expect them to graduate into something else and keep the mini or expect them to graduate into like a really really high end countryman, well, because that's 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 kind of the challenge. Because we all want to feel like we're we're sort of transitioning into something else as we grow older or or whatever. In and in, in theory, you, know, you do it like like I did it. I mean, and and I know because this is my my personal story. I started with a, a two thousand three you know Cooper S that yeah it was it was about as much as I could even afford at the time. It was a pretty expensive car, twenty six, twenty eight thousand dollars, whatever it was. But I could afford it, and I enjoyed it. Sure, I could have gone and bought a Honda for fifteen thousand, you know, for ten thousand dollars less, but I didn't. Okay, so fast forward, I'm on my seventh mini now in fifteen years, and I've progressed to the point where, yeah, now I'm buying one of the most expensive minis out there. Well, and you have a you have a beautiful mini. Yeah, a forty one thousand JCW yeah. with but, like every every option, and also. Right. Like if it's well sparked. So that's my point is that's the progression. That's the natural progression of a brand keeping a customer um, much like BMW does. Right, Gabe? You, know, you start out with a three series and then you have a couple of those and you move on to a five series and you're like, oh, this is nice. And then when you get older and you have enough money, you buy an X5, an X6 or a seven series and well, yeah, I mean, that's the natural progression. I'm sure somewhere in there, the midlife crisis is the M5 or the M3, <laughs> the M3, then the M5. <laughs> OK, but you know what I mean? There's there's somewhere to go. And so I think- do you think so? Here's a question to you. Um, do you think that many should go up market? No, I don't think there's any need to go up market because well, there's enough of a range there now. Like you hold, said, by Jason, what, you, what if what if there is a <coughs> what if there is a, a roadster? What if there's an electric roadster? Sure, it was that suck. topped out at sixty thousand dollars, and it had insane performance and it had a three hundred mile range. If they limited it to five hundred cars, that would sell, they would sell every one of them. Well, they can't limit. I mean, that that would they 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 have to make they money. Can't. That wouldn't that wouldn't work. Yeah, they can't do that. But I, I I do think it would sell. I do think it would be a perfect option. I and I say that because. I see fifty thousand dollar minis roll out of our dealer on a weekly basis. I am not kidding. They're selling for that kind of money. And here's the other problem: the demographic that Mini wants to go after, 
they're not getting, at least not that I see. The average age of people buying these cars is well, about well, 55. You're, you're in Kansas. I mean, I know it's I know it, and I, it, that's the perspective I have here. I don't know what it, the it, demographics are. Now. It, it, and, and you may not be wrong. You may not be wrong and you may be right. But I will say that I the one thing I know for a fact is that it does differ depending mm-hmm. on where you're at. It does. I do agree. I mean, Chad, I don't know. You see customers come in all the time with minis. What What do you think the average age of your customer is? Um, um, I would say probably mid thirties is the is the average customer. Okay. No, no. I mean, we we have we have old and we have newer. And, you know, uh, it's been something I've been struggling over a long time. And, and as when we're talking in the Slack about, you know, people jumping ship and stuff, it's like I'm seeing this all the time. And, and it tends to be a lot of Gen 2 owners. I mean, they're, they're having problems with their cars. They're having a ton of stuff going on and they're just not dealing with it anymore. And they're like, you know what? I'm done. I'm not dealing with the brand anymore. I don't like it. And I don't like what they're doing with the new ones or they're going older and they're going back to the 53s. And those cars are going to, I think, start skyrocketing in value here for people that have low mile ones. But I, I've seen a lot of people sell their cars in the last year um, at an alarming rate to the point of where I need to start looking at you know my business model, my business plan, because the manufacturer is not supporting the market enough that I just know there will be business for me in the end. And I'm sure, you know, Todd's got the same concerns yeah. in the end that, uh, you know, he's not, uh, you know, going to be laying stripes down on a car every day at the dealer. You know, he's going to have to find other dealers or, you know, whatever, you know. Yeah, you think about that percentage wise is that I, I put stripes on, you know, 50 to 60 percent of the cars that they, they sell out of our one dealer here. OK, well, basically, since 2013, my sales have, are down 30 percent. Also, I'm feeling that in my pocketbook, you know, I'm feeling yeah. that my in my sales and I got to make up for it in other ways. And I, I've branched out and, and I'm not hurting that. That's that's not a big deal there. But, yeah, you, you figure out a way to do it. You yeah, know? yeah. And and. Here's something interesting talking about old cars, and then we can move on to is I actually offered a guy that w- he was at the dealer this week, brought in the most gorgeous chili red 2006 with a with the arrow kit, that that fantastic arrow kit that they had on this car, and it, this car was immaculate, literally a 2006 with 36,000 original miles on it. I offered him ten, I offered him ten grand on the spot because I said, sir, do you want to sell this car? And he goes, I don't know. What do you give me for it? And I stood there for a minute and I go, what kind of price would be almost absurd, but he might take it. And I said, how's $10,000? What did he say? He goes, he kind of looked a minute and he goes, I think it ought to be worth that. And he goes, I'll let you know. Right. And then tell, tell but, him I give him 11. Yeah. <laughs> but but the fact that and I was serious, you know, I would I would have figured out a way to, to make this happen because it was such a beautiful car and I do love it. But Chad, you're right. I think. That there is, I don't know if it's nostalgia in me because you know it was my my favorite right. year. Of many was two thousand six, but it was a good car, really good. There's so much about that car that was really good. Yeah, and there's so much about my car now that is even better. It's a, you know the, you know we hear about all the complaints. Oh, from top to bottom. Yeah. And yeah, the Gen 1 owners, they had a couple of complaints and they're like, oh my God, the dreaded this or the dreaded that. And you know, you're like, oh my God, you're going to have to put a power string pump in this. You know, yeah, it's but you're so not the end the of the car. world. You care. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You're passionate about the car. It's, it's exactly what you want. You can really put all these fun things into it and it, you're doing things. But yeah, you may have to do one or two things. No big deal. Well, the Gen 2 cars, man, they are doing 50 things and they're still trying to just run and then you can't modify them the way that you really wanted to with the R53 so there's a lot of downfalls and people look at it and they're like well you know this car needs six things and it's going to be five grand to fix this car and it's only worth five grand right now so right no I'm not fixing it and I mean I'm and dealing with this I, I, I would like to say daily basis but Almost hourly basis. I don't think that's unique to Mini because I see people with other brands do the same thing. No, oh, yeah, I, definitely. I mean, I'm sure that there's other cars that are they're like, just. Yeah, they're like. I'm to not give p- you guys, to give you guys a little bit of a, like, I literally had my 
in 70s BMW at a very acclaimed dealer or not dealer but shop and they was they they were they were literally like there was an open I mean Chad how do you how do you qualify this like sort of an open ended like we're just searching for this problem right and I mean I was at I was at the, I was the at the point where I was like or- what's that at the known problem or they're trying to no. find a problem. Well, they kept on finding problems that I wasn't aware of, which is really disturbing. And, and I'm at the point where like I'm calculating, you know, 10% of value, 20% of value, right. 25% right. of value. Now granted, like I actually think that the, I, I paid very little for the car. So it was more of just 20% of what I paid for. But um, even still, it's like, you start to think about that. I'm like, well, wait a second. Like, can I start it and just drive it home? <laughs> well, that's why DB. Exactly. That's why DB ended up getting road have a garage tired, night and figure this out. tired of putting money into the Cooper, you know. Yeah, I mean, there's little things in <laughs> in any car model that you you don't see. You know, a, a say a power steering leak, which is you know really only a problem for particular cars within the lineup. But you know, you can you can find these things within the car and you can find all of these like little problems and yeah, there's some things that need to be get get done, but you know, I'll tell you my two thousand five Chevy van, it's got a hundred thousand miles on it. It does not use a drop of oil. I never have to check it. I never have to think about it. I I bring it in when it needs servicing. I put a new filter in it, and I put oil, and it's done, and it goes back out, and I drive it another 5,000 miles, Chad, and I never you, use oil. Uh, what what engine do you have in that? It's the uh, 4348, something like that. You know. The 436, the V6? No, it's a V8. V8. How many years did they sell that car? Oh, I mean, the the, the van, oh, pff, I don't know. It's probably... Uh, 20 years. No, well, the V8 itself has been you know, around for forever, but, uh, you know... But that, I guess that's my point. Like, it's that, like it's like one of those things, that, and it's great. That's amazing. Like, right. BMW, but, got, like, they're, they're just, like, so screwed with the, the Prince the Prince engines. Oh, and then, uh, totally effed them. I mean, really, it has. Yeah. I mean... But, you know, the 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 difference, though, you know, and comes back to the point of whether it's that GMC van or the Prince engine, you know, nobody has made a different cylinder, you know, design. Nobody has made a different piston. There's no Hemi in a Mini. (laughs) Well, right. You still have a a top ring, a compression ring, a middle ring and an oil control ring. It's the exact same design from day one. Nobody has yeah. changed. Like, well, we're going to change this piston, and it's just going to have this O-ring in here, and it'll be great. You know, obviously that wouldn't work. But you know, like, it's a turbo engine. It's going to use a little bit of oil, but I'm seeing massive amounts of oil. I know. I had I saw a guy come in the other day. He got a 2009, and uh, he literally was putting a quart of oil in every time he got gas. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. When you're when you spend more money in oil than gas. <laughs> oh, I mean, you, you know, you they're really question what you're doing. And, and his attitude was, I just want to drive, is... <laughs> his attitude was, I just want to drive it another twenty, thirty thousand miles. You know, do I have to spend a lot of money to get this fixed? And they were like, No, you keep putting oil in it and probably make it. You know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, but you're, how much money are you spending on oil? So no, actually, you no. into the environment because where is that oil? <laughs> well, going? that's the that's the thing is I did this this comparison with a customer of mine and I was like, look, if you want to put a brand new engine in this car, say you know it was ten thousand dollars, okay. If you want to put a used engine and it's five grand, if you just want to put oil in your car, it will cost you a hundred dollars a year, based on the amount of oil she was using based on miles based on what she would normally do hello so, amazon.com send me regular cases of- well and, and that and that's you know it comes back to the whole yeah it's a bad for the environment yeah it's not what we should be doing in the whole nine yards but it's a cost it was person. literally cheaper for her to just keep putting oil in this car than it was to change the motor mm-hmm. but i get that why is that motor so bad i mean why you know why is it, you know, and that's that's the disheartening part because I have to go tell these customers every single day. It's like, sorry, your dog died. Well, and I, I think also uh, that is one of the things Minnie has to get over and has to get beyond is 
everybody going, oh, I'm going to stay away from Mini because I know a guy who had one that blew up at 80,000 miles. And, you know, yeah, but how so do you what, so how, do, so, how do you deal with the so what my question is, you got the the new Mini models that are, I would say, in my experience, dramatically different than the first or second gen. And they have their problems. There's always problems with cars. But yeah. the, the, the quality of components is it's just sort of, a, you know, it, it's a different, it's a, it's a very well, different thing. When people ask me, I tell them, it's like, look, you know, the new Mini overall has not had any major problems with the engine. It's doing really well. If you can get over the looks, it will be a fine car. You will have no problems with this. And they're like, oh, okay. And I would say uh, one out of every eight to ten of those people maybe actually go get one of those cars but the other people are like yeah since I, I can't stand the looks I, I i would rather get this little little less fun car but it looks good you know and it's fine because you still have to wear those that pair of shoes or whatever you know so you know it's not necessarily that me i can tell as many people as i want it's like look that power plant is great but how long does it take for that internet sensation to get out there? So, yeah, they've got a huge black eye right now. But once you've got that black eye, it just it's takes a time. hard time to make it go away. It just so takes- this this brings me to my last point. Todd, I'm going to ask you. Because yes. right. you, you, you have your defined opinion. I'm very curious. Right. How much do you think this specific problem is hurting many sales? And and this is this relates to people who are current mini owners who are deciding not to buy another mini. You mean the the issue of reliability? Yeah. Um, I, I would put. Gosh, it's it's a tough one because I think everybody knows in in today's day and age, pe- people are pretty savvy. And when you look up reviews on something, anything from a restaurant to a product on Amazon or whatever. You're going to find negative stuff written about whatever you want, okay? That may be a perfectly fine product. Yep. And you take it with a grain of salt. So I, I would say it's only the reliability uh, issue is probably only about 20 to 30 percent of, uh, you know, of an issue, if, if even that. Maybe only a 10 percent issue because seriously, how many people literally go look at ratings on cars and reliabilities before they buy them. I mean, they'll ask their friends, you know, anybody who has one of these cars or, yeah, my neighbor has it and he loves it. That's all they need. They aren't going to look any further than that. Okay. But if they get, if you got three neighbors who are like, oh, I had one, I got rid of it because, you know, the engine blew up and it was going to be $8,000 to fix it. And I just got rid of it. If you have three of those stories. Yeah. And, and the likelihood of that happening is, is not that great. So, in answer to your question, you know, ten to twenty percent maybe of an issue. I don't think it's a. I don't think the reliability thing is a huge issue, but it is with retention. Now that becomes a really big issue because the community itself is very passionate about this, and they listen to each other and they respect each other. And you start yeah. reading these stories among the community and people who are like, "I just can't. I can't get over this." Yeah. You know? I yeah, put, no, I agree. I, I've got these, uh, you know, tons and tons of posts. And I, I read one this morning that was a, a customer is like, hey, I've only been in the brand for a week and I've wanted one for forever. And already my check engine light is on. I'm having this problem. Oh, my God, what do I do? Mm-hmm. And I see that post once a week. You know, my response somebody, to the people is when they buy the car is get the extended warranty. And I, it's like, I recommend that for BMW also. Do not buy a used BMW if you can afford it. Um, but you also need to really read the fine print on that extended warranty. On what's included. You're right. Yes. You really need to be fully understanding of what that warranty will cover and will not cover. And you also have to realize that it's not a BMW warranty. It's a aftermarket warranty make sure it's serviceable your BMW. yeah yes. that's right. chad great point make sure it's serviceable at a place like your shop or yeah a shop or well wherever you i mean because you know people will tell us like well i've got this aftermarket warranty i was like well you need to realize that i can deal with that warranty and it is a pain in the ass i mean totally 100 percent lots of pain, pain. 
yeah. it's paperwork, it's phone calls, it's pre authorizations to make sure it's, you know, maybe it's sometimes funny. they have to come and inspect the car, you know, like right. you, you may have, you may take weeks for you to get this car fixed and it will cover the $2,000 repair you need after you pay your $250 deductible. Right. But, you know, it could take forever to get there. But, you know, you also have to really realize that you don't necessarily have to go to the dealer either. So, well, anyway, I think, yeah, Gabe, but the short, the shorter answer to that is I think the, the issue of reliability hurts more with your long term owners, people who've owned multiple cars when they finally get fed up and they're like, that's it. I've had it. You know, I put eight thousand dollars into this car and I'm done. I used to love it, but it's just a financial thing now. And um, I get that. And I get people who talk to each other. And and like we said, you know, the three people I know in the last week who've gotten rid of their minis for other brands. What did we say, DB? They went with a Murano, Land Rover, and a, a GTI. He picked up his uh, his GP1 with me in Monterey. And they have been friends, you know, ever since. And finally, he's been through a lot of minis. I bet he's been through had at least probably six or seven minis that I know of. And he yeah. finally just like, I can't get... He literally said, he posted on Facebook, I can't get over the looks of the F56. I just can't stand the front end of that car. And the GTI is a much better looking car. And it's a great car. And he, he bought it. Yeah. And that's that's huge. That's huge. <laughs> I mean, the GTI is a great car. It's true. It's a yeah, different car. And, and yeah. Exactly. The, the GTR is a nice looking car. I mean, I really like the headlights. The taillights look cool. It's a good car to drive too. I've I've, dri- I've driven them many times, and, and but I think it's- you've got to admit, Todd, it's a different. Like, I mean, I drove one, uh, gosh, a couple of months ago. It's a it's a slightly more relaxed, more mature yeah. drive. It feels different. But and, it's, if you want to mod it, you can. There's a lot of stuff out there. But a lot of tunes for a GTI. It tunes, may go faster, but it doesn't change the fact the steering rack is a certain ratio. Right. You know, there's a certain it's a certain size. It's bigger than a mini. So they no longer make a two door version of it. You yeah, there's no two door version. So it's just a different car. Right. And it doesn't make it a bad. It's a. I actually think it's a great car. Right. But it's just different. Well, I think they're on it. I think the new agency yes. is kind of taking over. I think they're. I think they're. Uh, we should. I, I suspect we're going to start to see some pretty big changes shortly. Let, let's hope so. <laughs> you don't even can I just, can I just say you don't need all wheel drive and you don't you even need snow. snow tires yeah you don't even need snow for, for winter tires you just need cold weather and if you've got cold weather you still need winter tires agreed agreed yep. <laughs> I'm hoping out because it's going to be 70 degrees in Kansas City tomorrow so yeah, yeah yes sir and my Michelin Pilot Super Sports are still on my car right now and by the way they are extremely fun in 50 degree temperatures. However, there is some um, um, pants changing moments on hard braking because there's no grip to these tires <laughs> in cold weather. So if it gets below 50 degrees, it's time to change your tires. That's what I'm saying. That's the short. <laughs> so if you guys want to know a secret, my last secret, I have a <coughs> mini uh, JCW countryman or Cullivan. All wheel drive. Sorry, my, my throat's clear like closing up as we speak. I'm this cold is just good. We're just almost there. But the last point I'll make is um I uh in the USA we talked about trying to get some snow tires on this car. We couldn't make that happen. I am about to go into winter with all wheel drive and summer tires. Oh, oh boy. This is gonna be fun. And and I have snows. I actually have snows. I just need to get some wheels. And I thought, you know what? Maybe I should go a couple of weeks and see what it, what it's like and report back. We all know what it's like. I know what it's like. We're it's horrible. For, for editorial purposes. It's Like I said, Gabe, it's fun until you try and stop because then it's dangerous. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> it's true. It, The danger is in stopping. That is true. For science. <laughs> I have nothing else to add because I can barely speak. It is it is done. Yeah, it is complete. Um, it's not on the site yet. I've been selling them like hotcakes, and uh, I even, I even make one in carbon fiber. What? Yeah, yeah. I uh, I installed one last week as a uh, a customer requested because they got a couple of little dogs that hop in and out of their their new countrymen and uh, were kind of scratching that bumper on the back there. So I said I've got just a thing for you and put on a carbon fiber rear bumper protection strip for the new F60 Countryman 
and it works like a charm. Works like a charm. Sixty bucks, easy peasy. So, I, I bet for uh, you know Black Friday you will see it available. So go to uh, Motoring Stripes this week. Maybe I'll even do a Black Friday sale. <laughs> I, I, I like I I don't understand what you're talking about. Like in, in in most scenarios, the command effect is a beautiful effect. Why would you live in Arizona in summertime? That seems like a winter. <laughs> seems like a winter place, DB. You need to move up here. I'll get you a room. We got a I got a I got a room. I got a pull out couch. You know, you're always welcome. Come on up. DB's response is, "Why would you live in Phoenix in the summertime? Because it's effing delightful, and I live here." <laughs> So hot, right? So hot. For God's sake, there's 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 cacti. Uh, now I get it. Now I get it. <laughs> Speaking of motor stripes, Todd, look at that Instagram post for Motor File. Hold up. That that post that 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 club and JW post that should be like a. That's a, that is a literally an advertisement for Motor Stripes, right there. Yep, it's a good. That's a look for a mini right now. Is black that thing out? Black it out. Yeah, I sent the I sent the blackout grill to Gabe. Yeah, he sent a it. Piece of vinyl to to wrap around the uh, the uh, bar that goes across, which is a little tricky, but it's not impossible. It's it's tricky. It is tricky. I'll say that. But yeah. you little can do it. Well, <laughs> just end the show, baby. <laughs> All right, gang, thank you again for sticking around, sticking with us. I uh, apologize again for all the technical difficulties, but the, for this week, you know, we are done. So this is the part of the show where I do like to make that funny clicking sound, and then I say, questions, comments, or concerns, go ahead and click back over to whiteroofradio.com. There you can leave us a note in the show notes. You can also email us, feedback at whiteroofradio.com. But until next time, gang, this is DB. I'm done. Cheers. See ya. Cheers.